Governor Wike signs executive order proscribing IPOB in River State as Namde Kano fires back. And an on the World Trade Organization new DG position don't allow Trump frustrate Okonjo Riala. Governor Biano of Anambra State tells President Muhammadu Buhari. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladendi. Welcome back. And to the first issue of the day, Governor Yesom Wike of River State has signed an executive order to reinforce the ban on the indigenous peoples of Bahafra, IPOP, and its activities in the state. In a statement by Special Assistant of Media, Kelvin Ebiri, the governor, in a broadcast on Wednesday night in Port Harcourt, emphasized that the state government will neither accept nor allow any individual or group from within and outside to violate the peace, endanger lives and property under any guise as River State remains the home to all ethnic nationalities. Joining us to put perspective on this new movement or, or this new development in River State is Higher King, a legal practitioner. And also, we are also being joined by Uche Okuku, who is the Secretary General of Oaneze Indigbo. Good evening, sir. Well, good evening. Yeah, that's Mr. Uche Okuku. Later on, we'll be joined by Higher King. I'm sure he's trying to sort out one or two issues with the network. Uh, let's start with you, Mr. Uche Okuku. What exactly is your take about the new development? I'm sure this is a fallout of what happened during the Hensas protests we snowboard into some high-scale violence, if you want to call it that way. Well, thank you. Um, the governor is the chief security officer of the state. Uh, you are getting me? Very well. The governor is the chief security officer of the state, and in his wisdom, he proscribed the activities of IPOP. This is not the first time the activities of IPOC have been proscribed in the country. You will recollect that two, three years ago, the Southeast Governors Forum proscribed the activities of IPOC in the Southeast. Um, nobody accused IPOC of uh, violating the law or committing mayhem. But on sad enough, our son, Nande Kano, on uh, several brokers on Radio Biafra, admitted that he instructed his members to burn the, the hotel of Ashwaju and destroy other institutions, uh, public places in Lagos. It is sad and unfortunate and unacceptable. The Igbos are not violent people. The Igbos are peace-loving people. Nande Kanu is a, an Igbo and has uh, uh, the right to live, but he must allow other people too to have the right to live and move about and do their legitimate and lawful business. What the governor has done is to be proactive to ensure that life and properties in Port Harcourt and uh, the whole of River State are protected. So I salute the courage of the governor. I endorse what he has done. And I pray that members of the IFOP adhere and obey the ban order for now. I, I will still bring in Higher King as a lawyer, probably to explain more to me. Uh, because one will expect that uh, if a prescription has been done by the federal government, um, do we actually still need the state? to re-proscribe or proscribe again, but we will find out the import of that legal uh, move. But let's look at uh, River State. I don't know whether you've been there. I've been there, and I've seen very strong activities of IPOP there. 
you see them all around very, very pronounced there. So what is likely to be the implication of this decision by the governor? Will they, you know, backtrack and, you know, not come out to say we are members of IPOB? Well, I, um, yeah, of course, uh, um, it is in the interest of uh, the members of IPOP and Nadekano to obey the order made by the governor. It is in their interest and it is in the interest of the people of River State that this order is obeyed for now. River State is a volatile state. We need peace for the state to grow from strength to strength. And I do pray that members of the IPOP obey the order and I in my position as the Secretary General of SND, I call on them to obey the order. Okay, thank you. Let me quickly bring in uh, Haya King. Uh, Barista Haya King, good evening. Good evening. Thank you very much. I'm here. Good. Let me quickly get your take. What is the import? I can hear you. I can hear you. I can okay, hear you. I can also hear you if you can hear me now. My question is, what is the legal import or the legal implication of the governor having to you know, proscribe IPOB again when um, the region has done that, the federal has done that. What is the import of that? Well, there is, um, there is actually uh, nothing new that the governor has said. Like Uchokoko said, I completely agree with him that uh, the order, whether good or bad, should be obeyed. And uh, that all I put them back all he go through they God in this right now. What the governor just did is to reiterate uh, has already been said by the president. They have been uh, prescribed before now, whether good or bad, wrongly or rightly, they were prescribed. Like this, uh, when they started, they were not violent. Uh, but along the line, it is on. Um, you know, bad stuff in them. And uh, they will get a prescription before what happened is happened. I think about it. Speaking, the governor has not added anything to what has uh, been there before now because they have prescribed and have not challenged. Uh, that uh, prescription has not been lifted. So that prescription is still there. And uh, that is the law as it is, as it is as of today, that I hope has been. Prescribed. Just like the Zikris movement was prescribed by the British in the 40s and 50s. And that Zikris movement remains prescribed to date. A lot of people were prescribed by the Zikris movement. Zikris movement started by the people and the nation along the way of the prescribed. And nobody has done anything to this guy. I was just looking at the legal import, the legal implication of that decision by the governor, if you can quickly recap it so that people can hear you more clearly. Uh, there is actually no nothing that the governor has added to what is already existed. If you recall, before now, uh, I thought has been described by a court of law, and nobody has challenged that prescription. So that prescription remains up to date. So the governor merely reiterated what uh, has already been done. The governor did not make any new law. He did not make any new executive order. It only re-emphasized that I thought had been uh, declared. That was all the governor said. So there is no legal implication, whether against or for, just repetition of what is already on ground that the governor merely did. There is no legal implication okay. that I know of. Okay, let, let me quickly hear you before I go back to uh, Mr. Uche Okuko. Uh, still on you, uh, Higher King. I know one yes. strong operational method of IPOV, which is the Biafra radio. People will imagine that that should be where someone should be looking at rather than re prescribing. So, what do you think? How do you think the governor will this? Proscription make him stop the bandwidth or sort of or Biafra radio. I didn't get the last part of the question. I'm saying that uh, will this in any way stop the frequency of Biafra radio? Because I know it's very, very clear right there in Port Harcourt. 
Whether it, whether it could help to stop them. The Afria radio, how do you stop that by law? The federal government has not been able to stop the Afria radio. The Afria radio has been there for more than four five years. In fact, they are under the Afria radio, not just the one being run by Nambekan. They are where there are other the Afria radio, up to two or three, uh, up to two or three, doing their thing secretly and all that. So it's not only Nambekan now that has the Afria radio. Okay. For me, they have been there. I say, so that uh, there was a time, over five years, they decided before uh, this present administration came to power. They've been there operating. So I don't know why they've not been able to stop them. But again, everybody has freedom of speech, freedom of expression. So they depend on that, they are not able to, to do that. They have freedom of speech, everybody can say whatever you want to come. You, whatever you say, you should stop there by own time. Okay. Everybody has to decide, but for that stop here, my chance. You don't have to use your right to speak on my right or whatever. You know, to circumvent my own right. I have my right. You have your right. You don't have to circumvent your right. You don't also have to circumvent my own right. That's the law. Thank you so much, Mr. Uche Okuku. Uh, uh, another pra uh, serious issue we need to look at because um, a lot of people will say. Why don't you just ignore Namdekano? Because people would say that that attack was never carried out by the Igbo. So why give him that kind of attention? Because we know the implication of that. You, it, it's been, that pronouncement puts a lot of Igbo people endangered, especially in Lagos. So what is your plan to appeal to IPOP not to make such dangerous claim that could endanger other innocent people? There is, there is a distinction between uh, IPOP and Igbo. Nandekano speaks from an organization called the IPOP. The Igbos are different. So, our Yoruba brothers and sisters must appreciate the fact that Nandekano is not speaking for the Igbos. Nandekano is not an Igbo leader and is not speaking for the Igbos. So whatever he does, or whatever the IPOP as an institution does, they should take responsibility for it. So the Eurobus can uh, should appreciate our position that Nandekano does, does not have the mandate of the Igbos to speak for them. And he has never claimed to speak for the Igbos. He claims to speak for IPOP, which is not the same with Igbo. And... Uh, you will agree that it is not only the Igbos that make up what was called Biafra. What was called Biafra was uh, people of the former eastern region, which is beyond, which is uh, uh, far above the Igbos. Okay. My, my, my question again is, what is your appeal to him? Whether he's going to be appealed, whether he's going to be sanctioned, what are you doing to ensure? Because we're talking about uninformed people who might want to, you know, take advantage of a situation that shouldn't be taken advantage of? It is not only the Igbos. It's not only the Igbos that will appeal to him. Humanity as a whole appeals to him. Because what he's doing is uh, he's inciting his hate speech. And that is what the, the kind of thing that led to the genocide in Rwanda. So okay. we must all stand up and say, look, Nande Kano, you are wrong because you cannot use any media platform, either electronic or written uh, media platform, to incite people against other people. His uh, call on IPOP to attack uh, the governor of Lagos State and Ashua Jews is absolutely unacceptable and regrettable. But it must be reiterated and made very clear that his position is different from that of the Igbos. The Igbos are peace-loving people. For more than 300 years, we've been in Lagos doing business, went to school. Nandi Azikiwe school in Lagos, Akanibia school in Lagos, or the Mebojuku school in Lagos. Our people and the Yorubas have been married for more than 200 years on record. So Nandi Kano cannot destroy that relationship by okay. his own actions. Thank you so much. I, I, I hope I will be able to come back to you. But your point seems very, very well driven home. Mr. Hayaking, no thanks to the network. Yeah. I'm sure you have so much to tell us. 
how best do you think this should be handled, starting from River State? Because what you said is, I'm sure the governor said that because he's been seeing some activities of IPOP. So how best should this be handled, and how do we ensure that indeed these activities are indeed prescribed? I am very, very happy with um, the speech of my learned friend, Usha. Um, I didn't know that uh, they would speak that way. Because what now the Kano is doing is uh, actually uh, 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 putting the Igbo in bad light. Because those, those are very tricky. Those are insightful They are very wrong. I, I am very happy that the Igbo Secretary General is condemning it. And I also know before now that it is not everybody that uh, is listening and Kano in Igbo land. Even in River State. Not everybody in the that is with him. Because of the way he's going about it, he may have a good intention, but the way you go about it, he throws everything. The way now the is going about it, right from when he was on radio, before he was on stage. You know, he was on radio, nobody knew him. Uh, just two radio, he begins to hear somebody abusing people. When, when you call from Potaco, they say, Who is that? You say that Potaco is your brother. You say, If your brother is not Potaco, he's their father, he's this, he's that. Nobody calls him in the book. He's just like that. He's just by an exertion that you get people in Yakra. I agree with you, Chapo, for the old Eastern region. My father fought in Yakra War. He was a major in Yakra War. He fought, he was with his father, he was inside of Yakra Laundry. He laundered the officer's clothing. The London train, London train, and I am, and those days they take them to London to graduate and what they could do. They are clean and all that. Before he came back, he was in Norway, he was in the University of Kosoka before the war broke out. So he pushed along the other, but the way Islam is going about it, if we don't elect people to join the Aqua, people have the, the, the right to say, I will not join or I will join. There's a way you, there's another person organization that is going on now, that is being headed by one other uh, uh, person. He's going out and asking people to join. He gave people's opinion. It's the same mistake we made uh, 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 when the colonial masters came. Colonial masters just cut off all of us and joined us together by us in 1914. By 1960, when we would have, everybody would have joined the separate way, we were also joined again by, 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 by independence. Have you asked yourself, why did you think Nigeria get independent in 1966, or to six, why is it that the end of Africa we got independent lastly is the cause of this okay. to, to, to be one, to be together? I'm so sorry, Hayaki. You're welcome, you you and today we are here. Now, Thank you. In Protocol. I'm so sorry, our time is fast spent. I wish we could listen to you more, but trust me, we'll keep in touch with you to continue this conversation some more the time. Our time is really fast spent. That's a higher king, a legal practitioner, a rights activist. And uh, thank you once again, Mr. Uche Okuku, the Secretary General of Oanese Indigbo. And uh, we have no other choice than to continue preaching peace. And only then we can actually have the kind of country we all crave for. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, we will take a short break. And when we come back, will Okonjo Wiala be announced as new DG of World Trade Organization despite U.S. withdrawal of his veto support for her? We'll be right back. That is all for discussion. <laughs>